surprised at you. How can you stand it? I like it. You mean you're in love with him? You've been meeting this Roy Rogers secretly behind my back. Oh, Father, don't be ridiculous. I've never met the man in my life, and I don't want to. Especially. Oh, I'm ridiculous now, am I? It seems to me, young lady, that you're the one that's making yourself ridiculous. Roy Rogers gave five shows in Chicago, and you sat through every last confounded one of them. It so happens I like songs about the West, and I like the way he sings them. Ha! <laughs> Prairies in the moonlight, when it's cactus blossom time in the old corral. A lot of romantic falderal. Uh, balderdash. What was that, Larkin? Oh, just an expression, sir. The old cacti and the old prairie, <laughs> and all that sort of nonsense. You stay out of this, Larkin. Yes, you stay out of this. You're quite right, sir. I should never have entered into it. Jackie, you listen to me. Father, I'm listening. You're not going to throw yourself away for a ten-gallon hat. I won't stand for it. What's wrong with a ten-gallon hat? You used to wear one. That was 30 years ago. At least I had brains enough to scrape the mud off my boots and get into a decent business. The Dalrymple Packing Company. And what's the matter with the Dalrymple Packing Company? Nothing, Father. Absolutely nothing. But it is the cattle business, isn't it? Indirectly, yes. But it isn't living on a cattle ranch. If you don't like cattle ranches, you shouldn't own one, Father. I don't like hot water bags, but I own one. I own a whole western town. Yes, a quaint, nostalgic little town. Full of character and the color of the old west. You like it, huh? I did like it until you dowrimpled it all up with advertising. I'm on to your nonsense. And we're leaving for a two-week cruise right away. You hear that, Captain? Aye, sir. 
Dad, please, I've planned so on this trip. You're please. going with me, and that's final. That's all you ever think about, isn't it? Planning my whole life for me. Well, if I am, it won't be with any dude ranch cowboy. I'll pick my own son-in-law. And I hope you'll be very happy. Oh, well, it could be worse. That comes to having a father who's used to bossing everybody around. Another cruise. Anything he can think of to keep me from going out to the ranch. He's afraid it runs in the family. What do you mean? The West. You have to know your father to know what he's thinking. Well, I remember him as a young man when he first came up the cattle trails to Chicago. It dazzled him. The millionaires, the gold coast, society. Yes, I know, Cap. I know all about that. Well, come on out into the fresh air, darling. It'll do you good. Society. Nothing would do but he had to be a part of it. That meant forsaking his background and his friends. He spent 30 years trying to break into society. Well, he couldn't do it. So now he thinks maybe you can. Society. I hate it. Cruises, nightclubs, long parties. Aye, and those back bay battle axes button around. I know exactly how you feel. You ought to be on your own for a change. That reminds me of a quotation. I forget the author, but it goes like this. The bird of time has but a little way to flutter, and the bird is on the wing. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, uh, that's from Omar Khayyam. <laughs> song we might be able to use in our show at Dalrymple. Well, well let's get more right, 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 huh? If you like wide open spaces, let me tell you where the place is. Head out for Texas, USA. If you like blue bonnets blooming and a state where there's some room in, head out, head out for Texas, USA. If you come from California, Kokomo, or Hackensack, let me warn you all, you all may never go back. If you like real southern cooking, and your women all good looking, head out, head out, for Texas, USA. Play one, Hugh. Let me tell you where the place is. Head out, head out for Texas, USA. If you like blue bonnets blooming and a state where there's some room in, head out, head out for Texas, USA. If you come from California, Kokomo or Hackensack, let me warn you all, you all may never go back. If you like real southern cooking, and your women are all good looking. Head out! Which way? Texas, USA! Well, how'd you like it? Oh, that's a fine idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. We'll work on it some more tomorrow. All right. Yeah, it's about time we turned in. You coming along, Roy? I'll be in as soon as I get trigger bedded down. Okay. Where did you come from? I... Well, you stopped at the last station and I just got on. I'm sorry, kid, but I'm going to have to call the conductor. Oh, wait a minute. Will you let me talk to you? All right. What is it? 
I ain't got any money and I've got to get to Texas. Where got in Texas? Dalrymple. It used to be my home. It did? Yeah. I used to live there myself. I'm going to stop off and put on a couple of shows for an old friend of mine. Do you happen to know the sheriff out there, Gabby Whitaker? Yeah, sort of. Hey, what's the big idea? I'm just checking to see if you had a gun on you. Oh, you got me wrong, mister. Honest, I wouldn't do nothing like that. You never can tell. You know, I haven't seen the town for a long time. Not since I was a kid, about your age. Used to call the town Rainbow, remember? Yeah. That was before that big meat packer bought up the place. Big blubber called Wooster Dalrymple. Yeah, I heard of him. Big, big blubber. How'd you happen to leave Dalrymple? Well, I just got so I couldn't stand it. He was so tough. Who was? Monkle. Monkle Larkin. Let's start all over again, shall we? Well, it was my Uncle Larkin. He used me for a come on, broke me into the racket. I tried to get away and... Well, it just wasn't no use. Uh, what's your name? Jack. Jack Larkin. Just like my uncle. I think you and I'd better have a little talk with Gabby tomorrow when we get in town. Ain't he the sheriff? Mm-hmm. I don't want no part of him. But you can trust Gabby. Huh. I don't know what you've done, kid, and I'm not going to ask you. We'll talk about it tomorrow. But it's getting late, and I think we'd better turn in. I have an extra bunk in my compartment. Oh, oh no, no, gee. This is well, I wouldn't think of taking your place. I'm used to things like this. All right. Just as well be comfortable, though. I often sleep here myself. You do, huh? Mm-hmm. Climb up. Kind of a tough upper, ain't it? Oh, you can make it here. All right. Get your clothes off and I'll hand you a blanket. Did you say you were going to sleep here too? Well, uh, I... I guess not. It might be a little too crowded. Please, Trigger. Don't stare at the lady. Good night. Good night. How are you? Hi, Roy. Glad to see you. Welcome home. Hi, Jim. There's the great Worcester J. Dalrymple. Oh, uh, you mean that crummy statue there? Yeah, the town's benefactor. It's a wonder the statue ain't taking a bow. Yeah. Mr. Haynes. Come on, I'll make room here. Let us through here. Well, how are you, Gabby? Oh, you hog wrestling young whippersnapper. You finally come home, eh? Sure did. How have you been? How's that? I say, how have you been? Did it shed it off? I mean, shed it off, Jack. Blame you or I'll shut you up in the hoose cow. <laughs> oh, Roy, this is Mr. Kirby Haynes. He's one of the committee putting on the celebration. Pleasure to have you with us, Mr. Rogers. Glad to know you. Oh, Pete, come here. Pete McAvoy. He's one of the boys who'll be riding again you in the Pony Express. How are you? I think we've met before, haven't we? I don't think so. This the rest of the committee. This is Mr. Jones. How do you do? Welcome to Dollar Info. Mr. Johnson. How are you, Mr. Rogers? How do you do? Uh, Mr. McIntyre. Hello, Roy. Glad to see you. Thank you. Rogers wants to see you. All right. What'd you want to see me about, Roy? What do you mean? Well, the kid told me that... Hey! Horse seed! String him up! String him up nothing! That's a hundred dollars fine! Get after that kid! I'm deputizing every man with a horse! Come on, you posse!
was a brilliant idea. It wasn't my fault. No, I suppose you didn't bulldog me off that saddle. The next time you go riding, you better tighten your sense a little bit. You still haven't told me why the masquerade. It all started one Halloween. Oh! You'll be all right in a minute. Oh. Well, I'm sorry about stealing Trigger. I didn't want the sheriff to see me. Why? Have you got a police record? About a mile long. But it isn't my fault. Uh, it was my Uncle Larkin. Here we go again. Good old Uncle Larkin. You better get out of sight for a while. Right over here. Oh, Gabby! Where's that horse thief? Well, I almost had him, but he got away. You take the ravine and I'll look down the road. Here we go, boy. Oh. You didn't have to bring that saddle. Oh, I'm rugged by now. <laughs> I was going to get it. You think you're rugged enough to hold this lid up? Oh, sure. Thanks. I don't know why you did that. I don't either. Well, thanks anyway. That's all right, Jackie. Climb in. All right. It's a pretty tough upper, but I think you can make it all right. Say, what about Trigger? I couldn't get rid of him if I tried. He does. What happens here? I gotta get you out of that Halloween suit and put you into a dress. Oh. Time to be outfitted by the Dow Rimple Antique Shop. I'll be a smart cookie, won't I? <laughs> I happen to know the owner. You'll like her. She'll fix you up. must be the dress department. Well, it's uh, it's definitely an improvement on what you're wearing. Why don't you climb into it? Are you the salesman here, too? Oh, Lolita won't mind. Besides, uh, you don't want to meet her at too much of a disadvantage, do you? Oh, yes, I guess you're right. Well, here goes. <laughs> well, there's an old music box out here. I'll try it out. Fine. How adorable and sweet, so dainty and petite. Just like a lady of old Spain, where a handsome cavalier strolls beneath her balcony, softly strumming his guitar as he begs her tender. Senorita, won't you dance for me, steal my heart away, with your eyes of fire, and your lovely show, you're a picture of enchantment, sure to make each cavalier a fall. Won't you smile for me, little senorita? You were meant to be always bright and gay. You're a poem set to music, your promise of romance. We've your Senorita, 
vita la tua dolce voce es mi inspiración tu es mi dulce canción amor te muero de Where did you learn that? Uh, Senor Roy. Lolita. <laughs> gee, how have you been? Oh, Senor Roy, you come back to see me. You don't think I'd forget my old friends, do you? Old? I do not like this word. It is Roy who gets older. He spout out from this high, but I stay the same. <laughs> Mama Lita, this is Miss Larkin. Miss Larkin? Mm -hmm. Senorita Larkin? Si. Oh, oh, what a pretty dress. Oh, where do you get him? Oh, oh little thing we picked up at the Dalrymple Antique Shop. Oh. Oh, gracious me. <laughs> oh, you buying me? Mm -hmm. How much do I owe you? Oh, we will talk about that later. I'm going to give you how you call a good deal. Fine. Uh, Miss Larkin's a stranger in town. Uh, could you put her up at your guest room for a few days? Oh, see, see. Look, Roy, she is part of the place already. <laughs> you come with me, huh? Oh, uh, I'll be back later and tell you the story of her life. Never mind. I'll tell her myself. Don't you believe a word she tells you, Lolita. <laughs> Don't you forget to come back for dinner. <laughs> oh, he's a lovely boy. You come with me. I want to show you the place. Oh, I like it right so much. Trigger, you better get off the sidewalk. You're liable to get arrested. Oh, Roy, I left your buckboard up in front of Lolita's. Did you find that kid? Hey, Gabby, you better take a look in next door. Pollard's in there beefing to Haynes. Again? Oh. You're running to put a house out of you. What happened, Jim? They're welting. They won't pay off. Oh, slight misunderstanding, Sheriff. Pollard here is a little confused about his betting. I've been playing 17 ever since I came in. You can ask anybody at the table. You were betting on the number, sure. But you forgot. You weren't covering it the last time. That was my money on 17. They paid off. You're running a house game. You don't believe in giving a sucker a break. Oh, you do all right at this game. Every time you gamble, Pollard, you get in trouble. Why don't you quit it? All right, stick up for him. You're probably getting a payoff, too. I've done it. Now you get out of here. I catch you in town again, I'll plaster you with the gall dingus fine I ever levied. All right. I'm going. But I'm coming back, Haynes. Go on. Get out of here. Well, All right, ladies and gentlemen. Bet them high and sleep on velvet. The house feels like losing today. Pay your bet. Pay your bet. See, aren't we taking care of him? Sure, but we can't let him win that kind of money. You know, if he goes around talking like that, we're liable to get into trouble. We won't get in any trouble. He will. I hate see Pollard gambling like that. He's got a nice little ranch out here. The last two or three years, he quit work entirely. Let the place go to dogs. Any chance Pollard was right? You mean about the games being crooked? Yeah. I don't know. Losers always complain. If he's got any proof, let him bring it in. Do I feel sorry about that kid? Couldn't find hide nor hair of him. I don't think you have to worry about him. He probably hightailed it for the border. I keep my eye open for him. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. Sheriff, Sheriff, telegram for you. It's from old man Dalrymple. Yes. How do you know? What do you mean by reading my telegram? How else can I receive it and write it down? No, yes. oh, I never could read good after dark. What did it say? Sheriff's office, Dalrymple, Texas. Please be on the watch out for my daughter, Jackie. Have reason to believe she may be heading your way. She is blonde, five foot three, age 23. 
If you have any information, please contact me at once. Worcester J. Dalrymple, Dalrymple Building, Chicago. Does he say anything about a reward? Nope. Hey, I remember that gal. She was here about five years ago with her father. Scrawny little kid with a squeaky voice and yellow hair. Oh, excuse me, senorita. Have no harm done, senor. Hey, wait a minute, lady. See you later, Watman. a hold-up, and we want your money. I'll keep the place covered for a course or so, while I call in my gang to pick up your dough. You, get the girl your wallet, cash and everything, and the lady who's with you that diamond ring. I'll take that lighter and that string of pearls. They'll look mighty pretty on one of my girls. Grab that quart of champagne. Let it go, I say. You've had too much to drink anyway. Give me... Wait a minute. Hold everything. Ladies and gentlemen, look who's here. Roy Rogers. You can have my wallet. Your wallet? Not on your life. There's only one thing we want from you, Mr. Rogers, and that's a song. All right, have your girls round up the sons of the pioneers and we'll sing one for you. There's a rainbow over Texas. There's a sunbeam peeking from behind each cloud. A prairie breeze seems to say out loud good morning to you. There's a rainbow over Texas with the sagebrush singing out the way it should. You can't help feeling just downright good, good morning to you. There's a bluebird high in the branches, serenading his lady fair. And you know for certain all the doggies are flirting, just because there's spring in the air. There's a rainbow over Texas. See, the skies are clearing, and I'm here to say it's gonna be just a real nice day. Good morning to you. There's a bluebird high in the branches, serenading his lady fair. And you know for certain all the dogs are flirting. Because there's spring in the air, there's a rainbow over Texas. With the countryside awake and feeling great, everything's first rate in the Lone Star State. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Just a minute, Senorita. Yes? You fit the description all right. Blonde, five foot three. Your name Jackie? There must be some mistake, Sheriff. Mistake? What do you mean? You've got the wrong name. This is an old friend of mine, Angela Butterfield. Are you sure of that, Roy? I ought to be. She used to sing on the radio with me. How about that, Angela? Yes, we did. We teamed up together and we slowed them, didn't we? That's right. Well, there's ways and means of finding out. I got a photographic eye and a memory like a bull elephant. So, Roy... Oh, pardon me, will you? Roy, a couple of friends of mine here, they'd like to have your autograph. Fine. What's your name? Joanne. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rogers. You're welcome. Sheriff. It's about that telegram. Yeah. Said right. You were right. I am the girl you're looking for. What? Why in tarnation didn't you say so? Will you do me a favor? What is it? I don't want Roy to find out who I am. Well, I can't see why not. 
Well, he thinks I'm just a girl he met on the train. Oh, I see. <laughs> sort of romance, huh? Not exactly. You see, Roy doesn't think much of the Dalrymple family, and I want to prove he's wrong. Well, I don't see no reason why I shouldn't keep your secret. Oh, I knew you would. <coughs> hey, wait a minute. You want to start a brush fire? Be careful with that. It's all right. Loaded with blanks. Oh, yes. Hey, you with the tray. Pick up the money off that table. You're a little late, bud. We just had that number. <laughs> now get your hands up. Go get the money. Where did you come from? I'll ask the questions. How long have you been here? I, I don't know. Last I remember, I was sitting down to supper. Somebody came behind me and slugged me. Let me see your arm, your right one. Roll your sleeve up. Why? <laughs> what for? Haynes's gambling place was held up tonight by a man wearing your clothes and riding a pinto pony. I didn't do it. I can see you didn't. The man I was chasing took a bolt in the right arm. Well, that puts me in the clear. How the way did you can tell the sheriff? Wait a minute. If they've gone that far to frame you, they're liable to go the rest of the way. What do you mean? There's a posse riding out from town. Somebody in that crowd might take a shot at you. Yeah, one of Kirby Haynes' men. I'm gonna get that double-dealing crook. You wouldn't stand a chance. Now get this. You've got to drop out of sight for a while. Is that your pinto outside? Yeah, why? He was using the holdup tonight. My horse? Yeah. We've got to get out of here quick. This will be the first place he'll come to. Now remember, Pollard, no matter what happens, don't come back here. Yeah. Here they come. 
You'd better get off your horse and get behind those rocks. Give me your gun. Your hat. Hurry up. Hold it, boys. It's Roy. Where's that bandit? I think I got him. He went pitching off his horse down over that cliff. Anyway, getting down there? Ah, uh, it wouldn't do no good. It'd be a long time before his body would show up. Then it'd probably be miles down the stream. I suppose Pollard fired at you first. He turned in his saddle and shot at me. You sure he turned? This gun hasn't been fired. It's too bad we can't find the body. He's probably got a bullet hole in his back. Now, wait a minute. Ha! Ah. Jim Pollard's dead. He was an outlaw. It don't make much difference how he died. Now get on your horses, both of you. Say for yourself, Brother Carson. I saw a light. And I get the word. I know that it's right. And I have you heard. I'm gonna right, cowboy. Says to Lou, gonna be that brother like me and you and old Kit Carson. He will do way up in the sky. They're gonna ride, cowboy, can't be too right, cowboy, can't be too right, cowboy, can't be too right on a golden range up in the sky. Way up in the sky, up in the sky, yes, we'll ride, cowboy, can't be too way up in the sky. David slew that chance to tall brew. Red was my fault, big and small. He'll play his harp as I recall, way up in the sky. He's gonna play it, cowboy, can't be play it, cowboy, can't be play it, cowboy, can't be play on a golden harp up in the sky. Way up in the sky, up in the sky, up in the sky. Yes, we'll play it, cowboy, can't be way up in the sky. Way up in the sky, way up in the sky, cowboy, way up in the sky, cowboy. Have you got any money? Why, sure. Got some fine money here. About $50. That's fine. I'll take it. So you're not taking Gabby's money, are you? Well, of course. Why not? You better hold on to this. When I left town, you wouldn't even lend me 10 bucks. Now you're handing out 50 to a girl you never saw before. She's good for it, ain't she? Didn't you tell me she used to sing with you on the radio? Well, uh... If you wanted to borrow some money, you should have asked me. Well, I'll pay it back as soon as the race is over. Get your tickets here for the pony race Just tomorrow. Just a minute, miss. You have a customer. Here's $50, Now I want it all on Roy Rogers. That's number six. Thank you. Thank you. I got some horses picked out for you out to Ferguson Ranch. They better be good ones. I have a hunch something's going to happen with Kirby Haynes in charge of this Oh, race. there you go again. Ain't nothing wrong with Kirby Haynes. If that race was fixed, don't you suppose I'd be the first one to know it? No, I'd be the first one to know it. I have to ride in.
Lock it. Begging your pardon, sir. I thought there might be some news of your daughter. It's the Dally Rimple broadcast. Dal Rimple. <laughs> I always liked it better the other way, sir. There's more of a swing to it. Dally Rimple. Haven't you done enough to me without trying to change my name? I'm sorry, sir. What are you going it's to definitely do decided. Dal Rimple. When the shadows come it's Roy Rogers, sir. Through the veil. Rather contagious, too. Would you like to go contagious? To keep it's getting company. to be an epidemic. Riding down the sun. Turn it off. Oh, Gabby. Gabby. The horses are gone. They broke away. What's the trouble? Them horses Roy was going to ride broke out last night at the Ferguson Ranch. Well, they'll probably turn up plenty of time. The race isn't until tomorrow. Yes, but do the horses know that? I had a hunch something like this was going to happen. What do you mean by that, Rogers? I just have my own idea, that's all. <laughs> Are you suggesting that somebody's trying to keep you out of that race? That could be. No, oh, never mind that. Where's Ferguson? Over at his place. Let's ride out there, Roy, and take a little look around. Might be a break for me. Yeah, I was just thinking that. When did you first notice the horses being gone, Mr. Ferguson? We just discovered it this morning. No telling how far those horses have strayed by now. Say, looks like something hit this fence. I'll find them horses. Don't you worry none. You find them after the race. Say, look at these tracks. They have a truck in here. Yeah, fresh march, too. That's what they done, Roy. Drove a truck in here, loaded the horses, and drove off again. Have you changed your mind about Kirby Haynes? I don't know, but I'm sure going to find out. That won't do us any good. What we've got to do is find some other horses we can use. What about the Dalrymple Ranch? I don't think so. He paid too much money for them horses. He won't let anybody touch them. Gabby can fix that. Gabby, aren't the Dalrymple's pretty good friends of yours? Well, I... I guess one of them is. Well, that settles it. How about it, Roy? Want to ride over and take a look at them horses? Oh, of course he does. Hey, this fine looking place. Yeah, I don't know why you ever went to Chicago. How would you know? Why, uh, they always have them facing the sun. Uh, yes, that's what bleaches them, mm. I guess. You two work nice together. <clears throat> There's one thing you can say about old Dal Ripple, he don't own nothing but the best. They look like pretty good show horses, but that doesn't mean they can run. We could ask the groom how they've been training. He must be around here someplace. He's probably over in the tack room. Yep. And uh, where might that be? Oh, well, uh, uh, oh, here it is, see? It's just right on the door. <laughs> right on the door there. Yes. Anybody home? Mister. Mr. Groom. <laughs> Beautiful place, isn't it? Yeah. They sure got a lot of blue ribbons in this family. Yes, blue ribbons, yellow horses, and all kinds of colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll call up the main house and see. Uh, hello? Roy, if we hurry, we can take our pick and scram. Now, ain't that a nice way to talk in front of the sheriff? You know the kind of horse that I think you should have? I think it should be a, a sort of... Swayback? Why don't you let the man pick his own horses? Swayback. I just noticed... Uh... You noticed what? Well, I'd have sworn I saw a picture there a minute ago. Picture? Picture? What do you want of a picture? You don't want a picture. What you want is a real thing. Man likes to feel a horse under it. There must be a groom around here somewhere. Yeah. There must be something around here I haven't quite gotten the hang of yet. Well, uh, we'll never find a groom in here now, <laughs> will we? <laughs> Shall we go? I think the groom has the key to the main house, sir. Well, let's get him out here. What am I paying him for? Do you see what I see, sir? Young lady, come here. 
Hello, Mr. Dalrymple. Mr. Dalrymple? Oh. Uh, yes, that is your name, isn't it? I don't know. I, I thought it was. Uh, we dropped in to see if we could borrow some of your horses for the race. I'm Roy Rogers. Rogers? So that's it. You stole my daughter, lured her away from me. You thought she'd marry into the Dalrymple millions. Dad, please, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Ashamed? What was the law doing while all this was going on? What do I pay taxes for? Didn't you get my telegram? Oh, that. The telegram. Yeah. Seems to me I... I do recollect something about telegram. Now I know what you meant when you said one of the Dalrymples was a friend of yours. Lock and make a note of this. I charge this minion of the law with gross neglect of duty, conspiracy, and withholding evidence of a crime. I'll have him impeached. I'll run him out of office. Isn't that a little drastic, sir? Drastic? He'd be lucky if I don't have him lynched. Roy, I'm sorry. This is all just a foolish little idea of mine. How could you do it? A dally rimple making a fool of herself. Dalrymple, sir. Why, you remember. <laughs> we, we decided. <laughs> Come on, Gabby. I think we better let them have their little family reunion. You haven't heard the last of this, young man. We have laws in this country, and the local sheriff had better find out what they are. Dad, please. Did you find him? No. I reckon Roy's turned in by now. Got that race on tomorrow, you know. Well, thanks anyway, Gabby. Maybe I better get one of my deputies see you home. No, that's all right. Don't bother. Well, good night. Good night. All right, go ahead and ball me out and tell me what a fool I am. It's just like me, isn't it, to come all the way in town and try to find that cowboy and apologize. Do you think he'd listen to me? You're probably right. I guess he wouldn't. I wouldn't be too sure about that. You wouldn't? <clears throat> oh. Were you there all the time? Sure. Quite a conversation you had. We'll just call it even, and I won't have to apologize for what I said on the train. Now you know why I didn't tell you my name. The things you said about the Dalrymple family. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you wouldn't remember that. It's 12 o'clock. I suppose I'd better be starting back. Uh, I have Trigger over there. Do you mind if I ride home with you? Well, not all the way home. My father, uh, remember? Yeah. He practically eats cowboys for breakfast. That accounts for his bad disposition. <laughs> Gee, Lolita, this is swell. Some more coffee, Senor Roy? No, thanks. I have plenty. Before the race was this afternoon, I want you to do something for me. All right. You come with me, I'm going to show you something. I have some money. You know where? I have him here. I'm going to bet on the rest of the day. I'm going to bet on you. Say, that's a fine way to treat an old clock like that. Oh, this grandfather, he is no good. I sold out from him the works that never did work. <laughs> you sold the works that never did work? See. Si. Who'd you sell them to? That father, he is crazy. Pollard? He take the inside and tell me I can keep the clock. What did he want with him? He said I'll find springs, some kind of winders. Springs and winders, huh? You take this money and bet for me on the horse race. Oh, I'm sorry, Lolita, but I won't have time. But the race is not until this afternoon. I know, but I have to make a call on a friend of mine. Well, you can see your friend, but you can bet on the horse. I'll do it when I get back. Well, don't forget to come back before the race is too late. I need some money to open up a new department. Oh, Pollard. Pollard! Hello, Pollard. How are you getting along? Not too bad. Did you find out anything about Kirby Haynes? Yeah, a little. It'd have been easier if you'd have told me the rest of it. The rest of what? About the springs you bought in the antique shop. Oh. Well, what has that got to do with it? You know, those springs could be used to control a roulette wheel. Yeah. They could be. Now, look, Pollard, I can't do this alone. I've got to have some proof against Haynes. All right. So I rigged up the wheel for him. And they let you win a few times and got tired paying you off. Is that it? That's about it. All right. If you want Haynes in jail, you've got to testify against him. If you don't, there's nothing I can do about it. I'll testify. That's better. 
Be in town just before the race. About two o'clock, I'll be there. You've got to find him out, Roy. Yeah, he looks all right. Where did you say you were going to get my string of horses? Uh, uh, circle box X bar W. It couldn't be circle box X bar uh, Dalrymple, could it? Well, not to give you a short answer, it's a long story. One my idea. Couldn't by any chance be Jackie's idea, could it? Son, you're a mind reader. We had to slip them horses out when old man Dalrymple wasn't looking. That gives him another count on you, Gabby. Horse stealing. I was going to ask you, uh, where is Jackie? Never mind about her. Just keep your mind on the race. Well, here comes Pollard's body. Hmm. Naturally, right on schedule. Let us through here. Jim Pollard. Yeah, shot in the back. He held up the gambling hall. You said there'd be a reward for his body. Take him over to my office. Uh, not me. What I need is a drink. Boy, it's going to be the best year we ever had. Looks like we'll clear about $45,000. No wonder the way they're betting on Rogers. The race isn't over yet. You didn't figure on him getting those Dalrymple horses. Oh, that's all taken care of, isn't it, Pete? It will be. Rogers will be in the race, but he won't feel much like riding. Now then, just where was it you found the body? Oh, eight or ten miles from here, downstream. And you just happened to be riding by? No, I was looking for him. I figured I could use that reward. Reward? <coughs> well, we'll talk about that later. Now, just one more question. When did you first discover the bullet hole? Oh, when he turned him over and looked at his back? That's where you got him, isn't it, Rogers? You ought to know. Pollard never fired a shot. He was probably trying to give himself up. Them fighting words, Roy. Take it easy, Gabby. Remember, we've got a race to ride. You mean to say you're going to stand there and take talk like that? You don't see him doing anything about it, do you? He does better when he has a gun in somebody's back. I'm downright ashamed of you. You ain't the young fella I used to know, nor any part of him. I never thought I'd live to see the day that you'd backwater and run away from any man. At least of all, a loudmouth, bragging coyote like Pete McAvoy. What'd you do it for, son? Gabby, there's only one thing wrong with you. What's that? You're too hot-headed. Hi, Johnny. Nice horse you got there. Now, all you riders that ain't in the race, clear the street. Especially you female women. Make sure you stay out of my way. Listen to the man. I own no rules. Course marked out, you finish right here. Get that fourth horse back there. You're going out together, you ain't going at all. Come on, straighten them up there. Yes, sir. Oh, here they are. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. Give me those, Larkin.
This is Ken Carson speaking to you from the first relay station here. We're waiting for the riders to come in for their first change of mount. Johnson in the lead. And oh, yeah, that's him coming in all right. That's number four on the program, ladies and gentlemen. And here comes Tom Allen in second, and they're changing the mounts now. Uh oh, there's a rider and a horse in a little trouble there. Uh, he's, he's, uh oh, he's trying to mount, and the saddle is slipping, and the rider hits with a loud thump on the ground, but hard. And there go the rest of the riders in fast pursuit of the leader. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here comes Roy Rogers. He dismounts and runs for his fresh horse, the fast pony express mount, and he's off in back of the pack. I didn't know you liked horse racing, Mr. Dalrymple. I don't. I'm here to see Rogers take a beating. I imagine he's just doing it for the publicity. <laughs> Good sport and all that sort of thing. Like to make a little betting in him? I don't mind wagering a few quid. Say, uh, twenty dollars? Fifty dollars? My dear young man, don't get hysterical. This is money. <laughs> taking over from the second relay station. They're coming in. Looks like we've lost a few riders. From here, it looks like McAvoy's in the lead. Ingram's next, and Rogers, the favorite, is trailing. Now they're off, and there they go. Oh, we've had a spill. The rider overshot his mount. Here comes Rogers, and he's still trailing. But he makes a fast Cooper mount, and away he goes. What riding? What horsemanship? <laughs> Rogers is practically out of the race. <laughs> I'm glad you're so happy. Those are your horses Mr. Rogers is riding. Rogers riding my horses? Yes. Come on, Rogers! <laughs> Third relay station, Bob Nolan speaking to you and bringing you the entries as they come racing in. They just informed me that they're on their way to this post now, so they should be arriving here. Here they come. And let me tell you folks that that field has slimmed down considerable. Pete McAvoy is in the lead and he's coming like the oh, 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 oh. He's cutting in front of number five. Number five is going over backwards and down. There's a bad spill out there, ladies and gentlemen. A very bad spill, but he's getting up and walking away. Pete McAvoy has made his change and there's Roy Rogers making his change. He's riding trigger on this last lap. And there they go. Pete McAvoy in the lead, but Roy's right after him. Rocking, rocking. See if we can beat him back into town. Yes, sir, that's impossible. Yeah, we can try anyway.
Give me a straight bourbon, Jimmy. Oh, Pete? Now I'll take up that argument right where we left off. You won the race, now get out of here. I want you to repeat what you said about Pollard being shot in the back. What about it? You got the story all mixed up. Pollard wasn't in that holdup. The man I was chasing took a bullet in the right arm. In the back, you mean. What's the matter, Pete? I noticed you didn't use your right arm so good. Anything wrong with it? I broke it a couple of years ago. Kind of slow healing up, isn't it? All right, what happened to Pollard? I didn't kill him. He wasn't killed the night of the holdup. He was hiding out, and it won't take long to prove how long he's been dead. I'm holding you, Pete, till I make my investigation. You can't pin this on me. I was there when he was killed, but I didn't do it. You better start talking and talk fast. Well, we, we finally caught up with Pollard, and then we sent for Haynes. He's the one who... Each cloud, a prairie breezy 